from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, March 28th. Happy Thursday driving into work today. Another cool morning out there. It is very cool and kind of damp too. Uh, 48 degrees. So prepare for that. Mike goes to age. Yeah, not uh, you, but people <laughs> should prepare, prepare for that. Exactly. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's definitely it's brisk out there. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll kind of get you noticing when you uh, step outside this morning. Yeah, 46 now we have dropped down to. So we're almost 10 degrees below normal. And then look at the bottom number that dew point of 44, which, you know, just in itself is very, very low. But compared to the air temperature, when those two numbers are only two degrees apart, we have 93% humidity out there. So a lot of relatively high humidity, thanks to some of that rain that we got late yesterday afternoon, all that moisture in the ground. Now, we are going to have a huge warm up because this dryer does warm up very easily and very quickly. So we're going to be gaining 30 degrees or more throughout the course of the day. The aquifer dropped down half a foot in yesterday's reading. Hopefully that little bit of rain that moved through late yesterday up uh, to the north, maybe it'll give that a little bit of a bump. Oak did uh, continue to drop down slightly from the previous day's reading, but it is still definitely on the high side. Of course, a couple of days ago, it was uh, up to 6,000 something. As far as fog, that's what we're going to have to watch out for because of some of this moisture in the ground. You can see a little bit of fog is being uh, picked up or reduced visibility, I should say, right there around Castroville. Then head out 10, Seguin, Gonzalez. Gonzalez was down to less than a mile just about a half an hour ago. So it's going to be going back and forth. And what we've got, obviously, these temperatures temperatures, which are nice and chilly, clear skies, allowing the, the heat to escape out into space, and then temperatures get close to these dew points. And so that combined with some of that light wind is why we are seeing some of those patches of fog. So we'll have to be on the lookout for that over the course of the morning. Sunny, just a great day today. I, it's going to be a, a prize winner out there with the low humidity. And then tomorrow, as we start to get the humidity beginning to come back in here, we're going to see some morning fog. Then another great looking day tomorrow, but humidity is going to continue to kind of come on in here. A few more clouds on Saturday, a little bit warmer even on Saturday. Easter Sunday, just basically warm or should I say hot and humid, low 80s and mostly cloudy skies around here. A couple of showers on Monday and then, yeah, we're still looking at a, a cool front to move on through here. Get rid of the humidity, cool us down for the middle part of next week. Details on the Easter weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, good morning, sir. All right, good morning, Mike, and good morning to everyone out there. Unfortunately, we are starting with a crash this morning on the far uh, uh, west side here as we take a look at 90 westbound at 1604. So this just popped up on uh, the trans guy cameras here over the past, uh, I want to say about 10 minutes or so. So uh, just got off the phone and trans guide right now trying to get some more information on what's going on here. We do know that this was a crash on 90 westbound uh, going on to the 1604 north ramp. So let's take a look at where this is on our maps and you do see this right there. Very busy intersection. Uh, now, thankfully, we do not have a lot of people on the roads right now, so that's good news, but uh, we'll see if we get a little bit more details on what exactly is going on there. But we do have a crash being reported US 90 westbound that entrance ramp over to 1604 north in this area. Of course, US 90 always very busy uh, pretty much any time of the day there. We still have this tall vehicle being reported southbound on 281 at St. Mary's Street, but uh, not causing too many delays across the area right now, especially a little bit north of downtown. As we take a look at the citywide map and again, biggest thing that we're also following is all the construction taking place here in the Live Oak area. We'll check in on that's here in a bit but for right now our biggest situation is uh, again 90 westbound at 1604 that's uh, interchange right there we do have a crash being reported in that area market 70 back to you guys thank you rj we are getting a look at the sapd body camera video that shows officers did not properly search a teenager who brought a gun into the bear county jail earlier this month just minutes later that teen used the gun to take his own life. Now, our case that investigates team obtained videos through an open records request. They show several different angles of the March 3rd arrest of Jesus Gonzalez. Now, the 19 year old who was arrested on a felony domestic violence warrant was placed into handcuffs and officers searched his pockets. And at the same time, two other officers held each of his arms. A supervisor then shows up to the scene and observes as Gonzalez's pockets are turned inside out. At no point before or while he is in an SAPD patrol car do any of the four officers pat Gonzalez down before he's taken to jail. Less than an hour later, the Bear County Sheriff says a deputy patted down Gonzalez while he was being booked into the jail and then taken for a strip search. It was at that point that Gonzalez took out the gun from his clothing and took his own life. 
Now, we asked the San Antonio Police Department if we could speak with Police Chief William McManus about this. We were told that he wasn't available, and since internal affairs, they are investigating the case, but SAPD did tell us all four officers involved in Gonzalez's arrest are still on active duty. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. That is the idea behind a city proposal aimed at flood control. It could demolish over 100 homes with the goal of saving thousands more in a 100 year flood. The city of San Antonio spoke to a full house crowd last night at Brentwood Middle School proposing the 52 acre drainage project near Concepcion Creek near Highway 90 west of I-35. Public Works says roughly 4,000 homes in the area sit in the floodplain. The city's assistant director of public works says the city is proposing three options, each with a different cost and impact for certain communities. But all three scenarios call for the demolition of over 100 homes. The rain event that we're trying to prevent is a 100 year storm event and this area has never seen a 100 year rain event. And that is what we're trying to focus on. So it's, I know it's, it's a tough sell to tell people that uh, something really bad could happen when something small has never really happened before. These options are just proposals. Public Works wants to start the conversation now and make sure people are aware they live in a floodplain. Said he plans to meet with residents again April 9th, but they are still working on a location. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has finally settled a long-running lawsuit that started during the pandemic. The suit stems from social media posts on Twitter and Instagram in 2021 about the antiparasitic drug ivermectin. Ivermectin is prescribed to treat neglected tropical diseases in humans like scabies and can help deworm animals such as horses and cows. Yesterday, the FDA said in part that it chose to resolve the lawsuit without admitting any violation or wrongdoing. That suit was filed in 2022 by a group of doctors. Some media outlets had touted the drug as safe and effective against COVID. However, the FDA and the World Health Organization claimed it was ineffective for that use. Governor Greg Abbott has sent 200 additional National Guard troops to El Paso to help with border security. The Department of Public Safety says there's been a recent uptick in incidents with migrants along the southern border. That includes an incident over the weekend where DPS says migrants were caught cutting razor wire on the border near El Paso. Meanwhile, plans for Texas law enforcement officers to arrest migrants they suspect of entering the U.S. illegally will remain on hold. A new federal appeals court order is preventing that law, better known as Senate Bill 4, from taking effect until a broader decision is made. Taking a live look at Baltimore this morning. Uh, not sure if that's a live look there. It might be video. But today the NTSB will be interviewing the two pilots of the cargo ship that crashed into the Key Bridge. Yeah, it's flashing lights and, and moving water there. It's still very dark there on the East Coast. Last night, investigators called off recovery efforts to find the missing construction workers who are presumed dead. Now, yesterday, divers recovered the bodies of two workers. That's right. As ABC's Perry Russell reports, four people are still listed as missing. We're now moving from a recovery mode to a salvage operation. Maryland State Police say the divers have to wait for the rubble to be cleared before they can find the missing. The area they're trying to get to is fully enclosed by concrete and metal. Yesterday, divers recovering the bodies of Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes and Dorleon Cabrera. Divers located a red pickup truck submerged in approximately 25 feet of water. Divers recovered two victims of this tragedy trapped within the vehicle. The NTSB says new information from a data recorder on Dolly shows at 126 in the morning, the pilot calls for tugboats. At 127, the pilot reports they lost all power and are getting close to the bridge. 129, sounds can be heard consistent with the collision. New video shows how crucial that communication was. Traffic cleared from the bridge just moments before Dolly comes into view. Is it clear what's in the cargo on that ship? We do have the manifest of the ship. Uh, I have not reviewed it, but uh, we do have the manifest and we know that DOT's uh, hazmat team is also on scene. The port of Baltimore is still closed, cutting off a major shipping hub. How fast do you want to see this port reopened? I, I, I want it open now. You know, we're going to put every effort to to make sure that this gets done. But the thing that I know is this, uh, it's, it's a complicated mission. This bridge was built in the 70s. The NTSB says the design is what they call fracture critical. So when one part of the bridge goes out, the rest of the bridge goes out. There are no redundancies. There are more than 17,000 bridges just like that in the U.S. Perry Russell, ABC News, Baltimore.
The San Antonio Spurs were in Salt Lake City last night for a matchup with the Utah Jazz. The Jazz nearing playoff elimination. And what a start for the Spurs. Wemby winds up for the jam. San Antonio holds Utah to eight points for about a four-minute stretch. Meanwhile, Jeremy Sohan picking up where he left off Monday, splashing the corner three. 31-17. Now it's time for the Wimby special. Rejection on one end and then fresh off the transition. Chetty Osman drains the three ball from the wing. San Antonio wins 118-111. Spurs led in scoring by Devin Vassell with 31 points. Jeremy Sohan had five steals. Wemby had four blocks. All around great effort. Spurs play the New York Knicks tomorrow night. All right, today is Major League Baseball's opening day and the Rangers will open their World Series title defense with the two top AL Rookie of the Year candidates in their starting lineup. Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford will join six All-Stars in the lineup when the Rangers raise their championship banner tonight against the Chicago Cubs. Carter made his big league debut last season. He had a 306 batting average in 23 regular season games while reaching base in all 17 postseason games. Langford was the Rangers' first round pick last summer and made an impressive ascension through the minor leagues, then had a 365 batting average with six homers and 20 RBIs this spring. So here's the schedule for your AL West rivals. Yankees and Astros square off at 310. Cubs and Rangers are slated for a 635 first pitch. And step, play ball. That's all right, play ball. It's high now, 5'11 and 48 degrees for now. Weight loss, drugs, and pregnancy up next. What doctors say women should do if they're using medications like Monjaro. And let's look out there with live cam. If you haven't stepped outside yet, it will be cold. Well, you know, kind of a colder morning, 48 degrees starting your day. But we are looking forward to some warmer temperatures this weekend. We're going to be checking in with Mike about that very soon. Welcome back. It's 515. Well, medical professionals are urging women to stop taking weight loss drugs if they're planning to become pregnant. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, weight loss drugs and pregnancy. I had no idea whatsoever that this was going to affect my fertility. Marcella Romero from Fort Myers, Florida, struggled with fertility for years. She started taking Manjaro to help regulate her blood sugar levels. We actually got pregnant after starting Manjaro kind of like two weeks after starting it. Romero discontinued the medication, worried about any possible side effects. Experts emphasizing caution. We do not know exactly what the effect is going to be on the fetus. And so for that reason, there is a general recommendation that women stop taking the medications for at least two to three months prior to the time that they can see. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from real women and how weight loss medication is playing a part in their fertility journey. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. 516, 46 degrees. Look out there with trans guides. Still problems out there at Highway 90 at Loop 1604. But RJ Marquez is here today and he's going to tell us all about it in a little bit. Why always the couch? Does he need to go to puppy school? Get his little puppy diploma. How much have I been spending on this little guy? When your questions about life turn into questions about money, there's Erica, the virtual financial assistant to help you spend, save, and plan smarter. Only from Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? Ugh, when is my allergy spray going to kick in? You need Astapro. Astapro? It's faster, bro. Eight times faster than Flonase. It's faster, bro. It's faster, bro. Well, it's mom to you. Astapro starts working in 30 minutes. Astapro and go. Compliments build confidence. With one for me and one for you. At YoPlay, we believe in strengthening women. So we partnered with Girls Inc. to help build confidence by sharing compliments on every YoPlay lid. Now in stores. Welcome back, 519. Yes, problems already. Yeah, guys, not a fun start, especially in your Thursday morning for people out on the far west side. So let's go ahead and check out our TransGuy cameras here. Have a crash out on uh, 90 at 1604 as we take a look at our TransGuy camera in this area. And we have at least uh, one main lane blocked and the entrance ramp also blocked there on 90 westbound to 1604. This is going to be 
uh, out there in the far west side. If you are headed out of town, headed out to the uh, Castroville area or headed out to the Medina Valley area, Grossenbacher area as well. So we do see that traffic still kind of getting through here, but uh, this has uh, been going on there for about 30 minutes or so there on the far west side, 90 westbound at uh, the entrance ramp there to loop 1604. So if you have to head out, just keep that in mind. You might run into this uh, crash that's taking place at the moment. As we head out to the northeast side, we have a uh, still ongoing construction. This is going to be the situation uh, for the next couple of days or so. Uh, I don't get more information whether they're going to kind of uh, not do this as much uh, maybe tomorrow because it is Good Friday and also headed into Easter weekend. Um, but uh, for now, we do have uh, this uh, bridge beam work that's taking place there from Topper Wine to Judson and even some other column work that's taking place there from uh, the Forum Parkway over to Farrell Road. So there's been a lot of activity there on the northeast side. That's hopefully will close up or at least uh, they'll move on by about 6 a.m. this morning. All right, looking ahead to tomorrow because of course tomorrow is Good Friday. This is a holy week uh, for a lot of people in the San Antonio area. We're gonna be talking about the Passion Play. That uh, will be very busy, the downtown area right now. So we have a new route this year for the Passion Play. Uh, we're gonna start this year at Travis Park. Uh, so what we're gonna do is that uh, people that are taking part in the Passion Play, they're gonna come south on Jefferson, go towards East Houston, and then go south on Main Avenue to San Fernando Cathedral. So we're, this is gonna start at 9.30 a.m., but we do anticipate that closures will be much earlier than that as we get uh, law enforcement officials to help out with detours and uh, such in that area. Of course, they have a, a big service there at San Fernando Cathedral right there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So just keep that in mind. Anytime between 8 a.m., to 2 p.m. tomorrow on Good Friday, downtown area from Travis Park to San Fernando will be very, very busy. All right, Mike, we're talking about Easter. How are things looking uh, outside this morning? Maybe looking ahead to the weekend? Well, uh, kind of peeking ahead to the weekend, the humidity will increase. Now, for the Passion Play, tomorrow it's going to be fantastic. Might have some leftover fog in places early in the morning, but as the morning rolls on, it's going to be a, a very, very nice day. Today, just spectacular. Yesterday, of course, we had those, as expected, those showers and a couple of storms in our northern county and everything was just it was clear as a bell here for a while then in town and then that line of rain moved on through and boy a lot of folks got some beautiful pictures of the rainbows and you can see the the double rainbow right there it's absolutely gorgeous out now we've got chilly conditions again we're averaging 10 degrees below normal right now a lot of clear skies but those clear skies are allowing the heat to escape out into space and more on the fog in a moment and more specifically as far as Easter weekend again the humidity We'll have some starting to come back in here overnight tonight. The reason for some fog tomorrow. Humidity is definitely going to start to work back in here throughout the day Saturday and then especially on Sunday. Very humid around here and we're going to be in 83 degrees. So yeah, it is going to be on the muggier side for Easter Sunday. All right, back to the fog and nothing in and around town right now, but we do have a lot of it around Seguin heading out 10 Gonzales. Not bad. That's actually improved ever so slightly, but again, we do have some of this moisture left over in the ground and as temperatures try and drop down a little bit, that's why we're going to be seeing some fog. Also, given the fact we have some light or no wind. Now, as far as the dew points, which in themselves are very, very low, I mean, 60 is always that threshold number. So we're looking at some really comfortable air around here. And that's going to be the case throughout the rest of today. Tomorrow morning, notice how these numbers start to come up a little bit. And as that, that moisture moves back in, that's why a better chance for some fog tomorrow. Still, it's not going to be anything ridiculously humid tomorrow. You'll notice it a bit more in the afternoon. We'll have a couple of extra clouds around here, but that uh, humidity is definitely going to continue to work its way back in here throughout Saturday as well as, like I said, Sunday. Plenty of sunshine all day long other than a patch of fog this morning. We're going to be up to 70, excuse me, 68 at noon, 70 at one o'clock and then 78 for a high temperature today, which yeah, good indication, some dry air in place when you get that 30 degree swing in temperatures. It's 58 tomorrow morning, so closer to normal and then 80 breezy tomorrow, humid over the weekend, 83 on Sunday, a couple of showers, especially late Monday. And yes, we do have another front moving on through here. It's going to be warm and humid Monday, but boy, back down to kind of coolish temperatures and we dry out by the middle part of next week. More after this. April is warm up for the big summer movie season. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview of what's heading to theaters next month. Every day, I've prayed for a way to protect the weak. Dev Patel pulls triple duty as writer, director, and star of Monkey Man. The action flick hits theaters April 5th. 
The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. Writer-director Alex Garland brings his vision of what journalists covering a military conflict in the United States might look like in Civil War, arriving in theaters April 12th. Dawn of the Dead is here. George A. Romero's Horror Yarn is back in theaters and drive-ins for its 45th anniversary starting April 12th. A list of theaters showing Dawn of the Dead is available at dawn45.com. Time to do this, I'll need my own team. Guy Ritchie assembles a team of actors to portray a World War II Special Forces squad in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The battle begins April 19th. For their first family vacation, the Forgers travel to the snow-covered land of Freegis. <laughs> Anime series Spy Family brings its blend of family togetherness and international intrigue to the big screen in Spy Family Code White, landing in theaters April 19th. If she could replicate Dad's invention, it could be onto something big, Ma. The futuristic thriller Breathe, starring Mila Jovovich and Jennifer Hudson, heads to theaters and digital on April 26th. <laughs> You're incredible today. Thank you. I mean, it wasn't even like tennis. April ends with the love triangle of Challengers starring Zendaya. The match begins April 26th. Looking for my favorite seat in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 529, 46 degrees. And ahead on GMSA at 6, opening day is here for Major League Baseball. So we're going to look at the matchups for the Astros and also the World Series champion Texas Rangers who are looking to defend their title. Good morning, it's Thursday, March 28th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week. Everybody here had a good week mm -hmm. so far? Oh, yeah. yeah. Short week for me. I was, I was, well, not really. I worked Sunday, the yeah. All Star game. <laughs> True. But that was, you just you know, kind of yeah. moved over a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just kind of moved the day different. over. Yeah. But it is, I think, a short <laughs> week for a lot of folks mm -hmm. because yes. a lot of kids, a lot of folks will have tomorrow off for, uh, for Good Friday. And then, of course, going into Easter weekend. And overall, it's going to be very nice. Now, what's going to be interesting is it, it's so chilly this morning. By Easter Sunday, it's going to be kind of a whole different story. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. And the clear skies, though, are sort of adding to the, the threat for a little bit of fog. We've got temperature 46 degrees. We're about 10 below normal. And in itself, that dew point is very, very low. However, relative to that temperature, it is very high. We've got relative humidities up in the 90s and a little bit of a breeze out there. And as the uh, heat continues to escape out into space, we are seeing some fog and we've got that moisture left over from some of the rain yesterday. So we're already seeing a couple of patches of fog there around Seguin, Gonzales, a hint of it there in Castroville. So this will be, again, something we've got to watch over the course of the next couple of hours just for a few patches here and there. And again, temperatures everywhere are definitely chilly down to 39 right now in Comfort, 40 Kerrville, 41 Bulverde, as well as Bernie and 45 at Randolph. Oak, which is still high, did come down from the previous couple of days. Everything else is on the low side. Of course, the update account is going to come out a little bit later on this morning, 68 degrees at noon. So a couple of patches of fog this morning and then dry enough air to where we see one of those skyrocket temperature days where we're going to be gaining 30 degrees or more throughout the course of the day. We're going to top off at 78, 77 normal highs, so right where it should be. Great looking day. Tomorrow, really, really nice day as well. But again, things are going to start to transition a little bit as far as the humidity is concerned as we go on in through the weekend. Details on Easter Sunday coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, you got some problems out there, don't you? All right, Mike. Well, actually, we do have an update here, and it is good news. We have cleared out that crash out there on the far west side at uh, US 90 westbound at Loop 1604. As we take a look at our Trans Guy camera, they kind of adjusted it here, uh, moved it a little bit just to show that traffic is now moving pretty smooth here, especially on that uh, on ramp there from 90 on to 16. 1604. So that's good news out there for our drivers for the moment. But of course, US 90 always, uh, yeah. It's, it's a busy spot for sure. I know, I know a lot of people that uh, drive that area and they always have a few things to say. All right, stall vehicle here, I-10 eastbound at Loop 1604 on the uh, far northwest side. Uh, we've had some ongoing construction in this area here, especially on the westbound lanes of 1604, Lock Hill, Selma to Northwest Military. So uh, this stall vehicle not helping the situation out there, but we are still seeing traffic move through that area. Quick look at our outbound and inbound traffic times right now. Outbound times pretty much normal. Uh, what you would see on a normal Normal, uh, you know, Thursday morning commute. Inbound traffic times, though, I've noticed over the past couple of days, and this is indication of just the amount of. Uh 
construction that we're seeing on the far northeast side with all the northeast expansion work going on there. 39 minutes right now if you're coming in from the New Braunfels area just to get into San Antonio proper. So there's a lot of work being done. 35 especially around the Forum, the Topper Wine area and the uh, Judson Road area. So if you're coming in from New Braunfels that just went up to 40 minutes right now. Uh, just keep in mind just add an extra 10-15 minutes to your commute. But uh, again good news here is that we have cleared out that crash there. 90 westbound at 1604. Mark and Stephanie back to you guys. RJ, thank you. More victims are learning about 19 year old Sal, Saul Falcone Ibarra. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says he's in jail for posing as a 14 year old girl to lure another 14 year old girl to have sexual conversations. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says one of the victim's family members told deputies about some of the messages they found allegedly between the teen and suspect. In addition to being charged with online solicitation of a minor, Falcone Ibarra is also charged with possession of child pornography. Sheriff thinks there are more victims. If you know anything, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. A Bear County grand jury indicted a man and his parents in the case of the deaths of an 18-year-old woman, her 22-year-old boyfriend, and their unborn child. Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found dead inside a car the day after Christmas. Now, Christopher Preciado is accused of killing the couple following a drug deal. He is facing charges of capital murder and abuse of a corpse. Meanwhile, his parents, Ramon Preciado and Mieta Moromanos are accused of helping their son move the bodies to a Leon Valley apartment complex. Arrest records show that Roman admitted to driving to that apartment complex to meet his son. Records also show the gun used in the killings belonged to Christopher Preciado's mother. All three will be arraigned tomorrow. The San Antonio Public Library is scaling back renovation plans at one west side location and its board says budget constraints are to blame. As neighbors tell our Avery Everett, this project has already taken seven years and they are disappointed. The community needs to be listened to. They're the people who are going to be using it. We heard frustration among neighbors on the west side. Now that the promised renovations at the Las Palmas Library are changing. At least we thought we were getting a few modern things, but we've lost that. The San Antonio Public Library Board of Trustees voted to scale back upgrades at the Las Palmas location because of budget concerns. The library, located on Casterville Road, closed for construction about a year ago, but upgrades have been talked about for years. We've been working with this project since 2017. These renovations are backed by two bond projects. The board says about 90 percent of the 2017 bond project is complete, but the 2022 bond project will change due to rising material costs. When we came down to looking at the, the scope and some design enhancements, we realized that it was not possible with the funding available. The board's vote to change design plans includes removing a bathroom and removing windows and solar shade systems to protect from heat and glare. It will also change materials for the planned plaza and remove meeting room support and storage space. They are design changes. This meeting was the first time the public was able to see blueprints for the new plan. And even now, some neighbors say they're still confused. I think that the the uh, changes are still vague, but worse, the, the architect didn't have answers for a lot of the questions that people have. But now that the vote has been decided, they're trying to stay optimistic. Even though it's the design changes have been approved, there's still opportunity for us to ask the questions. A community concerned, but one just waiting to use their library again. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. In other news this morning, if you or someone you know drives a Subaru, your vehicle could be included in a new massive recall. 118,000 Outbacks and Legacies could have potentially faulty airbag sensors. It applies to 2020 through 2022 model years. Dealers will replace the sensors for free, and all impacted Subaru owners will get a notice in the mail. There were no jackpot winners in last night's Powerball drawing worth $873 million. However, according to the Texas Lottery, one person in Flower Mound near Dallas, Fort Worth, did win $1 million. The next drawing is on Saturday, and the jackpot is now worth an estimated $935 million. There has not been a jackpot winner since New Year's Day, so this weekend could be your lucky chance. Feeling a little thirsty this morning? Well, how about sparkling water with a very odd twist? 7-Eleven rolling out a new collection of drinks. One of them is called the Big Bite Hot Dog Sparkling Water. <laughs> yep, it's meant to taste just like a hot dog, including ketchup and mustard. 
The chain will roll out other flavors too. By the way, there are 18 or 19 7-Elevens in the San Antonio area on an April Fool's Day. 7-Eleven will announce where you can try their tasty new water. Ah, uh -huh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> yes. Ew. I'll start thinking April Fools. Could you be deceived. 540, 47 degrees. Up next, we're going to tell you more about this precious little pet who needs a new home. Aw. Outside with live cam, it, it's humid, but it's really chilly out there right now. So kind of a mixed bag of tricks out there. But grab a jacket, 47 degrees. We'll check in with Mike Ostrage and see how much it will warm up later on your Thursday. Ken is here from the uh, San Antonio Humane Society, and this little guy who this is just, just adorable. Who's this baby? This little baby is a pinata. So pinata has that yummy morning breath for puppies. Um, just <laughs> love it. <laughs> Puppy morning breath. Puppy morning breath. Just, I say just, puppy morning breath, puppy, but puppy breath, I guess, puppy right? Breath, yeah, because um, usually morning breath. Never mind. We're not going to get into that. We're not going to so. go there. That's also, a whole other show. But if you can just see it, and my favorite thing is look at his little bottom lip. I, I don't know. know. Where the camera we can get. And his little bottom lip kind of sticks out for a little bit. Kind of so. like, oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> Look oh, he at is that. Just adorable. He is really cute, really sweet. And he came in with mom. He and came a whole in with mom and, and yeah, eight of them. So we've got a litter of eight. They all look different. Um, so yeah, come on by and see us. All right. And come by and pick up some uh, yes, Fiesta some medals, medals. Yes. Which we have shown these before. And my favorite, though, is the, the kitty <laughs> medal because kitty is holding a chicken on a stick, which yes. I think is absolutely hilarious <laughs> there. And you got a special. Yes, we have a great one, promo. Right? So if you buy one medal, uh, one of the other medals, or one of our Fiesta t-shirts, you get a bag of three vintage medals for free. So, really? yeah, it's a great deal. So it's online or in our store. That is a fantastic deal. And also when you're there, shop for maybe leash and yes. toys and all, all kinds sorts of things of for pinata. So go check them out and check out this little guy <laughs> and all of his little siblings yeah. here. Not going to be a huge dog. No. Over there at 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 is the number <laughs> to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. 545, 47 degrees. We got there with trans guys. Some of these shots look pretty good. Uh, Loop 64, Petraco Road, and also, actually, this shot looks a little better, but we're going to check in with RJ Marcus about the accident that was around that area earlier this morning. Famous groundhog Punxsutawney Phil will soon see two more shadows falling around, and it won't mean more winter for us. Phil is now a proud dad to two baby groundhogs. Aww, well, his wife Phyllis has just given birth to the healthy babies, and that's according to the Groundhog Club. The names of the young groundhogs have not been released, and the infants are with their parents at the Puxitani Memorial Library. Library visitors can see them through the viewing window. I have a suggestion yeah. for the baby groundhog names. Uh -huh. Name one Bill, the other Murray. Oh yeah, that would be perfect. That's not bad. I wonder if that's come up yet. I, I probably. I'm, I'm sure. sure they're ahead of the game. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I was thinking something alliteration wise with the the Me pH too. sound like yeah. Phineas and Philbert or something. Yeah, Philbert. <laughs> oh, I like uh, Philbert. Yeah. But I do like Bill and Murray. That's yeah, that would be I mean, just an idea. That movie. Oh, and then if one's a girl, then that kind of wrecks that one. So. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, I mean, you can have a girl, Murray. Yeah. Okay. Remy. <laughs> Sure. It's a, it's All good a modern All groundhog, good right? Yeah. <laughs> information. <laughs> uh, good for Phil and Phyllis out there. <laughs> All right, 281 and Bitter's uh, traffic moving pretty smooth both directions right here as we take a quick look at TransGuide, get you updated on uh, a couple of things on the roads here. 37 at Salado Creek, same situation. And here, a uh, nice shot there of the Alamo uh, area of uh, downtown kind of showing the our uh, city there in the distance. Let's show you a couple of things that's going on right now. We have a stalled vehicle, I-10 eastbound at Loop 1604, not causing any major delays right now, but uh, we know that uh, there is ongoing construction taking place here on Lock Hill Selma, all the way to Northwest uh, Military Highway there, and uh, obviously something that a lot of people on the Northwest side dealing with in terms of traffic and construction. We're gonna take you out to the far east side right now. Uh, right now we're looking at a stalled vehicle, I-10 eastbound at Santa Clara Road, and it is causing a little bit of delays here, of course, uh, I-10 kind of a little bit uh, more narrow in this area right here. It looks like it's off to the shoulder, but still uh, affecting our traffic in this area if you are headed out 
um, uh, in a little bit to the Seguin area. Keep in mind, you may run into this stall right now. Everything else looking pretty good across the city. Before we went to break, we mentioned that there was that crash there at uh, 1604 and 90, but that has been cleared out. So that's good news there for our drivers on the far west side as we give us one more quick look here. Trans Guide, I-10, Callahan West, things looking pretty good out there for the most part across uh, many parts of the city is San Antonio. Mike, how are things uh, feeling outside this morning? It, nice and chilly out there. Definitely grab a jacket. It's cold out there. And of course, we had that rain that moved through. Most of those showers were up to the north. And then right around dinner time, just after that, that line just swept through town, moved on down to the uh, to the south and to the southeast. And on the back side of it, great view. There's the setting sun and the nice orange Reflection there off the uh, the clouds and the reflection off Woodlawn Lake. Great picture. Thank you for that one, Mr. McClellan. All right, this morning we've got a lot of clear skies out there, except where there is some fog. And we do have a hint of it there, Castorville, but especially heading out toward uh, Seguin. Gonzalez was at four miles, now down to two miles again. So it's going to be going back and forth. And even though there's no fog where you are right now, where there is the leftover moisture from some of that rain last evening, going to have to watch out for that. So we're going to have lots of sunshine throughout the day today, 68 degrees at noon. We're going to be gaining 30 basically from the low to the high across the board. So good indication we've got some very dry air in place. Now the humidity, which is going to remain very pleasant today, tomorrow pretty good. And you'll sort of feel it in the afternoon especially. Then it's going to really come into play going into the weekend and especially on Sunday going into Monday. 65 for dew point, low 80s. You'll definitely feel it if you are heading out to uh, say church services, brunch after Easter Sunday services, something like that. And then Monday, notice how the into Tuesday, the humidity, the dew point temperatures drop like a rock around here. We actually have a front that's going to be moving on through here. And as that front comes on through, this is jumping ahead to Monday. Couple of showers associated with it. Not a lot. The majority of it further up there to the north, but just that chance of rain. Monday, maybe one or two lingering early, early on Tuesday, but then we're going to be uh, clearing on out in behind that. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. We've had this northwesterly flow. That's what's it's pulled in some beautiful weather. These cool mornings, nice afternoons the past couple of days. That little disturbance, of course, that moved through yesterday. Now that next low is going to be digging out there to the west, and that's going to start to throw in some more moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. The Moisture, of course, comes in here from the Gulf of Mexico. This will mean some more clouds, especially coming in here Sunday. And then as that approaches by Monday, that then is going to touch off that chance for some rain. The surface front moves on through here. That low is going to kind of sort of hang back there a little bit. Then it looks like it's going to start to come on in here by the end of next week to give us another rain chance by the end of next week. So the forecast goes like this today, 78. Tomorrow, we start off nowhere near as chilly, still jacket weather, up to 80. And nice looking day, you start to feel the humidity. Then on Saturday especially, and especially on Easter Sunday, 83 degrees humid. Chance of rain, very humid on Monday. And that front moves through, and that's going to uh, give us a beautiful midweek next week. More after this. The Easter tradition of camping at a local park. City officials say tonight the park curfew will be lifted at 11 p.m., allowing families to go in and secure spots for Easter Sunday. The only exception is the Brackenridge Park at First Tee. Easter campers will be allowed to stake out their spots in that particular park beginning at 3 p.m. tomorrow. To look at all the list of all the parks where the curfews will be lifted, head on over to KSAT. Dot com. Well, we are getting closer to the total solar eclipse, and as you know, South Central Texas has a front row seat, especially the hill country, and that's why KSAT has you covered for everything you need to know about the big day, including how you should prepare and after the eclipse. And right now on KSAT.com, head to Eclipse Authority tab for a list of events leading up to April 8th. You can also check out an interactive map that shows the complete path of the eclipse, including totality. Our San Antonio Spurs are gunning for their third straight win after a solid performance in Salt Lake last night against the Jazz. We've got highlights coming up before tomorrow night's matchup with New York. And up next, three former employees at a Boeing at Port San Antonio say they were fired for raising safety concerns. What else we've been able to learn this morning? And checking Transguide, we've had a few issues this morning. Right now we're looking live at 37 and Houston Street traffic building at 1604 and Northwest Military will be back.